On the morning of May 18th, 1980, I went to Rocky Butte in Portland, Oregon with my wife Nadine and Scott. Here's what we saw. Growing up in Portland, Oregon in the 1950s, we often saw Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens gleaming white in the distance above the city's skyline. We loved to ski and picnic on those nearby volcanoes. My father would occasionally say, remember, they're not dead volcanoes, they're just dormant. When we got to Rocky Butte before noon, a crowd was already forming. I found a good spot and began filming a manual time lapse using my 8mm Bolex movie camera and a tripod. I shot a frame of film about every 30 seconds to every minute or two for many hours that day. We didn't yet know that over 50 people had already been killed and that the total destruction in the blast zone extended 17 miles to the north. We had no idea that people actually heard the blast itself in Spokane, Washington, and in Missoula, Montana, and even further away. Remarkably, the huge sound wave was reflected and Portland was in the blast's quiet zone. Who remembers now that one week after the biggest eruption, there was a volcanic ash fall in Portland? She blew again. St. Helens was still erupting, sending ash all the way to Portland. Its volcanic ash eventually went around the world in trace amounts. Some fell in Oregon, south of Portland, and some ash fell on the other nearby dormant volcano, Mount Hood, which was called Wyeast by the ancient people here. Later I did a painting of my memory of the eruption with ash falling on various landscapes. Pacific Northwest Native American legends say that Mount Hood, known in legend as Wyeast, battled with the smoking mountain Klickitat, Mount Adams for the affections of the graceful and beautiful maiden Lou Witt, St. Helens. Now we have seen a little bit of that. So we aren't the first to watch mountains erupt and exchange fireballs and ash across the Columbia River, but we now know why they do so as contemporary geological research increases our understanding of these moody Pacific Rim volcanoes. A couple of years later, I flew around the mountain in a small plane. From the air, it looked like total devastation. A few of us went in on foot, and we saw that life was coming back in the blast zone, with small lupin flowers everywhere. Astonishingly, up where snow had been before the mountain blew, we saw a little tree that we soon realized was actually just a buried tree's top. It lived through all of the heat and ash, refusing to die. Now it was covered in cones, still living, even though it was probably much more than half buried. For the full story of how life came back after the May 18th blast, watch the PBS Nova program called Mount St. Helens, Back from the Dead.